Hey everyone, my name's Anna. And my name's Lauren, and this is Archive. So first of all, we want to address the problem. What we noticed through our experience in various schooling is that makerspaces are stigmatizing. They're exclusive to women and minorities. So essentially, if we look at the problem at large and why this matters, within design industry, the further up in leadership that you go, the less women that we see. And the reason why this representation is so important is that we lose out on female representation within design thinking. And this manifests itself really well in the automotive industry, where we actually see that because crash dummies are based on male anatomy, this puts women at a 73% higher risk for enduring severe injury and car crashes. So it puts people at risk. So essentially within design and maker spaces more specifically, these spaces are often considered masculine and stigmatized. And so it makes the barrier to entry much more difficult for women and minorities. And it's all about those social cues. For example, uh, you can do a quick Google search and see that we've got men appropriately holding tools, appropriately building things. And then when we get to women, Nice. Well, those ladies are naked. We've got Rosie the River. I don't even know who let them in the shop. Oh, they have closed toed shoes. That must be it. But you get the point, okay? If we are only pictured modeling tools for sexual gratification, how is anyone going to take us seriously, both in and outside of these spaces? Oh, this is where you see hey ladies. Oh, oh. Hey ladies. <laughs> these are designed, these workshops are designed by women for women. So essentially what we're trying to do is shift the narrative within these spaces so that they are empowering. And what we've really realized through our research is that what has to change is behavior. That's why we focus so heavily in our solution on social methods. So this is how we interact with one another, how we teach things, you know, what are these power dynamics in education and how can we address those? So here's some ideas of, you know, the nebulous of what we thought we might be able to do in our project. And we did a lot of research on this, but we, I think what we found most powerful were all of the interviews that we did. We realized that there isn't a place that compiles all of these incredible stories of women doing awesome stuff in one place, and that was super frustrating during the research process. So essentially the solution, we know that these technical workshops exist, so we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, but what we are doing is we're looking at how can we put the human at the center of these solutions and design, design workshops and field guides that essentially shift the narrative within these spaces to create like social cues. So as you can see, basically what we did is this kind of a multi-tier solution. So we created workshop guide that compiles all our research, our findings, and proposes the three-day model, which is all of these social exercises that someone can read and then implement in their makerspace. But enter COVID-19, you know what changed? The world. What didn't? The female experience. So we decided to return to those interviews and return to those inspiring stories and really ask, you know, how can we collectively compile all of these inspiring moments from women all around us in one space? So we are gonna give you a tour of Archive. So this is the homepage for the website. You'll see that it's about empowering women to rewrite our history. And you can see we feature our latest podcast episodes. And this is really the main space for gathering community. And the navigation, you can see you can get to the gals, which talks a little bit about us and who we are. A little bit about our mission here at Archive. And then of course, a plug to our work, which Lauren will cover in a moment. So if you click here, it takes you into the guide to an inclusive makerspace. This is essentially the field guide that Ann and I created for facilitators to learn more about how to create inclusive, empowering spaces for their students with a really human-centered approach. And so the abstract is kind of a quick summary of that booklet um, and who it's for. And then we give a quick overview of our three-day workshops, as well as an example workshop that we created utilizing woodworking skill sets to create a speaker, a tea lamp, and a planter. So this is just a quick description of that product. 
as well as an overview and summary of where this project started and how we got to these workshops. So if you click into the Get a Guide, um, it just takes you essentially to the PDF of our booklet. Um, so this is the first page. And then just to give a quick overview of what this booklet covers, it goes into the problem, the research, but really focuses on the solution. So we target the solution in two main ways, which is the physical space as well as the social space. And all of the insights that we give in this book are really based off of the preliminary research that we did interviewing experts and taking surveys. And essentially this is in a compilation of everything that we learned within those spaces. And then the last part of this booklet is essentially outlining the three-day model for the workshops. And it really gets into detail for facilitators how to run those workshops. And this is the guide. If you keep scrolling through, you can read in detail on our tips. All right, y'all. So now we're going to play a little teaser of our first episode. Uh, thanks for watching. For too long, women have not been heard or believed. You're gonna have to be aggressive. You will always be held to a different, higher standard. And it's fucked up. That is the way it is. Who runs the world? Okay, that's right, girl. So if it is in fact true that the full humanity of women is not our culture, then we must make it our culture. I was born a girl in the wrong place. I'm a badass woman. Justice is not a concept we read about in a book. Justice is about the water we drink. Justice is about the air we breathe. Justice is about how much ladies get paid. So one of us can make it free, a hundred of us have to try. Ah. Hey everyone. Hi y'all. I'm your host, Lauren Sharp. And I'm your other host, Anna Corral. And welcome to Archive. I'm about to add a little estrogen. Ah, yeah. Buy my whip, buy myself, pay my rent. Have you ever wondered, where are all the badass women? Well, we have too. And just like the word archive means to store and collect data, stories, and histories all in one place, Archive, spelled O-U-R as in us, is a podcast that compiles the stories, experiences, and ultimately the existence of women doing awesome shit. And Q Morgan Freeman voice. <clears throat> in a world overshadowed by narrow archetypes. Archive strives to make women visible, and we mean all women. We'll hear from women around the globe, across generations of various professional fields, different identities, you name it. Archive empowers women to rewrite history. Our history. And welcome to our first episode, everyone. On today's episode, you'll hear a little bit more about us, your hosts, who we are, what we're all about, and how Archive came to be. We want to begin by answering the